the channel. Today, I have the pleasure to feature this piece from Zinvo. So here's the uh, packaging here, kind of this nice uh, dull color uh, cardboard uh, artwork of the watch. And then it kind of spills over to one side, which I kind of appreciate. And then on the other side, we have Zinvo and that's it. And let's just open it without further ado and let's show you, you know, so that's the watch sitting in there, but I just want to show you a little bit about what's in here on this packaging. Uh, warranty card and you can see there it's got two years there which is you know kind of neat it's not just one year it's two years. Uh, microfiber cloth for cleaning the watch and then uh, a basic manual and this one is nice and simple you know as uh, I guess part of uh, the operating style of this company it's nice and simple you know basic description and instructions Okay, and then just the terms of warranty, and that's it, I think. Then it goes on to the other languages that this manual is in. So let's just put this aside and get this watch out of the case here and show it to you. Okay, so that's a simple, like this foam thing that it holds it in. All right, put that aside and show you the watch. So guys, this is the Zinvo Blade Automatic. In this case, the this color version is gunmetal. They do have a couple of dozen, I think, versions uh, of colors on the website. Some of them may be out of stock as you look at it, but they do have a lot of color variations, including some pretty crazy, you know, yellow, gold, red colors and whatnot. So take a look at the website to see the variation of this watch, uh, if you will. Um, so Zinvo itself, a uh, little bit of a company, California based, uh, established, I think around 2013, as far as my research goes. Uh, and they have this aim to rethink watches with something new and uniquely inspired. Uh, and they have these values of modern design, quality materials, and affordable pricing. And, uh, you know, I think they probably achieve a lot of their goals. Uh, you know, affordable pricing, that one might be up for debate. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Uh, but, you know, I think a lot of it, they do kind of do achieve what they set out to do. So pricing wise, this watch is listed at 289 USD. Uh, if I find any discount codes, I will put it down the bottom. I think initially when this first came out a few years ago, it was slightly cheaper, uh, but the movement was a Miyoto. This one is actually an upgraded movement and we'll go into uh, the details of it now. So the movement in here, guys, is actually none other than a Seiko NH35A. Uh, stats uh, I'll list down the left of the screen here. Uh, rated accuracy you can see there and it, you can also see that this is supposed to have a quick set date but they've chosen uh, to implement it in this case uh, under uh, that turbine. So you can see it's it's a circular window but it's kind of half covered by that turbine but you can, you, you can read it right. It's 25 uh, black writing on white this there as the, the turbine kind of passes over it. Um, the rated accuracy uh, you can see on the left of the screen there, the detected accuracy is actually pretty good, minus six seconds per day uh, using my Time Grapher app. Uh, and, and I had to do that because uh, it's, I don't know how you would otherwise get an accuracy reading, you know, using uh, this without a, a traditional second hand. You can't really hack it to a, a reference time here with this type of display. Okay, so that's enough about the movement. Now let's get into the case here. The case here is 44 millimeter diameter PVD uh, steel. Uh, and in this case, it is uh, 316L steel with gun metal PVD. This is of course the, the color variation of this uh, specific watch. Um, the thickness, okay, let you see the side here is 13 millimeters. So not as thick as you might uh, think it is, but that's because the case thickness goes all the way around to the edge. It doesn't taper to the edge here. Uh, the lugs are pretty big, 24 millimeter lug width and lug to lug distance, uh, which is 50 millimeters between my thumbs there. Overall weight, because it's on the leather strap, it's not too heavy. It is a 130 gram watch, despite the size of this case. Okay, moving on to finishing then. Finishing, we have here a circular brushing on the top of that bezel there. Uh, on the side is alternating longitudinal brushing with matte surfacing, and this matte surfacing it's kind of interesting. It's almost like a bead blasted matte surfacing in between there. So it's interesting to uh, kind of try to find out what uh, they did to achieve that. Uh, but you know, that's really how it looks like to me. Uh, on the uh, bottom is circular brushing and then that screw in case back actually has 
polish on the gunmetal PVD that you can see there. Uh, one thing to note is that it does have longitudinal uh, brushing on the lugs there and immediately you can see as I pan it around, uh, it does have a screw construction for these lugs. So they're not kind of formed as part of the case, they're actually secured onto the case with screws, which is an interesting uh, differential point. I don't think I've seen lugs uh, that have been quite like that in any watch actually. So that there's something different and uh, relatively unique, I think, in this watch here. Okay, so with that screw in display uh, case back there, I'll just show you that rotor, which is pretty cool, right? You know, that, that NH35 is not decorated, but that rotor, they've actually chosen to do some PVD decoration and finishing there with Zinvo name there. So that, that that's that's a nice look. I appreciate that they went to do that. So screw in display case back, but push crown, and the crown does have some signing there, so kind of this uh, etched sign of the Zinvo kind of wing thing there. Uh, the, the water resistant is a nominal 50 meters. So you know this is not designed for submersion, it's really just a nominal water resistant for you know rain, washing your hands, etc. and uh, not for submersions. Okay, that, that's the case finishing. Now let's get into where a lot of the action is, which is this dial. So it's a matte black turbine uh, textured dial and around the outside of that matte black uh, uh, part is a brushed steel bit with uh, cutouts for the hour indices. So that again is something different. I don't think I've quite seen any finishing like this before. So certainly they've got some unique design. Uh, the compass positions, 12, 3, 6 and 9 are slightly larger than the rest of it. You know, hopefully that's, that's quite obvious uh, to you on this camera there. Uh, you know, but, but there's nothing uh, in addition to that. So there's no loom in those holes. There's no uh, loom on the hands on this uh, specific watch here. Okay, now uh, the main feature that's staring you in the face, of course, is the second hand. And the second hand is this kind of gray uh, patterned turbine that spins around. And they do say it is supposed to evoke uh, the intake of a jet engine turbine. And it kind of does. That's the first thing I think of. Other people have looked at it and said things like, it looks like uh, feet or legs, uh, you know, coming up from the central there and walking backwards. And someone else did say it's a, like, like a roulette wheel. So, you know, these are kind of impressions that I've gotten from other people. But the design intent is that of a uh, jet engine turbine. That, that's what they've explicitly said. Uh, the hour and minute hands you can see there um, are kind of invisible. So they, they are painted in matte black. So they're very difficult to see uh, behind that turbine, but the tips uh, so the tip of the hour is that triangle painted white and the tip of the minute is that kind of just that dash rectangle painted white there, right? That's how you tell the time. So it's kind of just uh, about 2.36 uh, on the display there. And hopefully that's not too difficult for most of you to interpret. Uh, I find that it, you know, it does take some time, you know, maybe a second or two for me to read the time. It's not one of those where you would glance and grab the time straight away out of an analog display, but it doesn't take me too long once I have gotten uh, used to this. Okay, so that's the description of the dial there. On top of all that is a flat mineral glass, which is sapphire coated, uh, and it does have a logo. So you can see at the 12 o'clock position there, there's a logo that's printed onto the glass. And as far as I can determine, it's, it's on the inside, it's not on the outside. And of course, that's where you would choose to put it as a designer. All right, guys, that's the description of the case itself. Uh, the band, moving on to the band, is stitched black leather with just kind of light uh, stitching here. Uh, nothing more than that, though. That's really just what it is, Zinvo branding there. And then the hardware is pleasingly also gunmetal uh, PVD steel brushed with that Zinvo logo that you can see on the, on the buckle there. All right, so guys, uh, that's the description of the entire watch. Let's just put on uh, for the wrist shot for you guys. And there you go, guys. There is the Zinvo uh, gunmetal blade automatic on my 17 centimeter wrist. So 50 millimeter lug to lug distance there. Uh, so it's kind of on the large side, but I think as a casual watch, it's not a problem for my 17 centimeter wrist. Uh, thickness, uh, as mentioned, is 13. Uh, millimeters so it does sit that much high on the wrist because the case goes all the way to the edge and that's how it looks like on this black leather strap okay guys so that's the description uh, of the watch what have i particularly enjoyed uh, about this watch so 
Guys, I, I really think this is such a cool, such a different design. It really does uh, you know, achieve those goals of the company, something unique. And it's a real conversation piece. You know, many people have looked at this and you know, come up and asked me about it or just mentioned that they have been simply mesmerized, staring at my wrist, looking at this thing spinning around. So it's a, it's a very interesting piece that, that you can get conversations going with. Uh, you know, I think it does have good design elements, uh, that very unique handset, you know, particularly that second hand. Uh, the hour marks, right, that ring with the cutouts uh, or drilled outs, uh, nothing uh, you know, that I've ever seen like that on other watches. You know, the stealth elements of this watch, of the gunmetal, uh, black, you know, including that rotor, that, you know, decorated rotor, nice design elements. And then this overall case has has a very industrial type of theme you know, in keeping with like this turbine uh, motif there. So it, it, it does have a kind of unifying a uh, very cohesive theme here in, in my view. And that's what uh, one of the things that I've really enjoyed about this watch. You know, what is there to complain about? Well, you know, not too much really. I, I think it is actually um, a, you know, a, a, kind of like a fashion watch, of a watch that you wear to start conversations, to, to look different. And you know, it really does that, something that I've enjoyed about that. Uh, but because of the, the how different it is, it is impractical both in versatility, right? So it's big, 44 millimeter gunmetal. It's not gonna be something you wear in formal occasions with a suit, even a shirt and tie. It's questionable to wear this, but any casual situation, sure, this will suit. Uh, but you know, it's, it's also impractical in horological function. So if you want a watch where you can easily tell the time, this isn't it. If you want a watch where you can tell the time precisely, this isn't it, because despite the fact that it hacks, and you can kind of laugh about that. Why in the world does this hack? Um, you, you know, they, we're not going to be able to sync that with anything. Um, it, it, you, you, you can't sync that with a reference uh, time. So you can't really tell the time precisely to the second by any means. This is just the way this watch uh, does this display. Okay, so guys, there we have it. This is my review of the Zinbo Blade Gunmetal uh, Color Variation Automatic Watch. Let me know your thoughts about this watch, you know, which has been really quite fascinating and enjoyable for me uh, to wear. If you have any of the other products or if you have any other variations of this watch, uh, certainly would love to hear your thoughts or just, you know, about the company in general. So guys, that's my review of the Zinvo. Uh, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. I put out new content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me and as always, I'll catch you guys next time.